Okay, this is lesson 18, problem set. It says multiply, the first one has been done for you. So if you notice, they took 2 and 3 tenths and made it 23 tenths. And they took 1 and 8 tenths and made it 18 tenths. Because if you remember previous lessons, we talk about that decomposing where you push all the numbers to the last digit. Guys, you need to stay seated for now. It's pay attention time, not turn in work time. Okay, so I've gone over and I've done this. I saw I have 2 and 3 tenths, so I turned it into 23 tenths. My 9 tenths became 9 tenths. And then you set it up just like you've been doing. Multiply the numerators. 23 times 9. 10 times 10 is 100. And then you come over here. 9 times 3 is 27. 9 times 2 is 18. Carry with the 2 would be 20. Tenth times tenth equals... So it's 207 Remember if you have your place value chart That means The 7 would be in the What place would it be in on your place value chart? Can I see your place value chart Ruth? Anyone? Just uh, that one's fine. Okay, look, we have 207 hundredths. So that would be all right here, and you guys probably want to be using your place value charts if you can't remember how to do this. 207 hundredths. How do we spread those numbers out? What do we have to do? Connor? So each number goes over, so the 7 stays in the hundredths, right? Yeah. And my 0 goes in the? Ten. And my 2 goes in the? Ones. ones. So I would end up with 2 and 7 hundredths. Instead of 207 hundredths, I would end up with 2 decimal zero 07. Because if you remember in the video, If I have the number 207 and I have 100 on the bottom, my numbers go how many places to the right? Two places to the right. So the 7 would go there and the 0 would go here and the 2 would go there. Let's look at the next problem. What am I going to put my sixes above? What's that going to look like? Number six, what do you think? What is my 6.6 .6 going to go on top of? Do you remember? job 66 over 10 times 15 times 28 over 10 equals 66 times 28 over what's 10 times 10 100 Okay, we can also solve it this way, 66 tenths times 28, what's going to go after it? Tenths. Let's 
Six times eight. Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Carry my four. Six times eight again is? Forty-eight. Forty-eight plus four is? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. What do I do down here? Add a zero. Two times six is? Two times six is? Plus one? Am I done with that? What do I do? What do I do, Camden? You have to, you have to see how much memory, or, then they're both then, and then I'll have to do the memory at the end of that Okay, so it's tenths times tenths is hundredths. So I'm going to, if I move every number two places to the right, on your place value chart, what would I end up with? 18 and 48 and 100. 18 and 48. Since you have a lot of writing, make sure you circle your answer. I don't have to solve this one because I just solved it over here. This would also be 18 and 48 hundredths. <coughs> So basically today what they're doing is they're just showing you two different ways to solve this. Yesterday they showed you the chart. Today they're showing you this process. They call this standard algorithm. I do not call it standard algorithm. What do you call it? My standard algorithm looks different to me than this. This would be Engage New York's form of standard algorithm. Well, I meant this. Um, let's do this problem down here, and then also I think I need to show you what to do with the little thought bubbles that they have on the next page. So this is going to be what? Let's see, number twenty-seven. What do you think? Um, I think it would be um, twenty-seven times maybe like. And then Let's decompose them. Throw them all in the same box. What would you get? Okay, and where is the last digit on this? What place is it ending? Okay, so I'm gonna put it over. What am I gonna put over? Okay, uh, over a hundred times nineteen. Nine over ten. Nine over ten. I'd have two hundred thirty-seven times nine, and a hundred times ten. which would also equal a thousand. So nine times seven is, what is it? 63, nine times three plus six. Nine times two plus three, 21. 10 times hundred it is How many numbers will be behind the decimal? Three. Three numbers behind the decimal, that would be two. See, you guys looked at it and you panicked, but it's actually not that hard, is it? You can look at mine later. Okay, let's look at a second page. So 
So what they want you to do is show how you got to this point. So if we have 3 and 2 tenths, what do we got to do to get rid of the decimal? Okay, by doing it times 10, right? And then six tenths. Oops, I'm looking at the wrong one. One and two tenths. Move it one place to the right, and that would give me another tenth, right? So, so far, how many times have I moved these? How many times? One. I moved that one once, and I moved that one once. So, what do you think I'm going to end up with? Tenths or hundredths? Yeah. Hundredths, because I look, I've made two places, right? And when you move the decimal two places, you end up with hundredths. That's another way to look at it, okay? So moving that bubble, so once I multiply it out, I have to put the decimal back. So two times two is four, four. three times two, six, six. zero. Two times one? Two. Three times one? Three. Glad you guys know your ones and twos. That's good. <coughs> Makes me proud. And ten times ten is? Okay, so we have 384 as our answer. But now we have to put these back. So I'm going to put one back. And now I have to put the other one back. See how that works? Yeah. So the whole thing is, first you move the decimal to the right to get them out of there. If I would have moved this two places up here, I would have had to go down here and go two places first, right? So when you move it out, you've got to move it back in. 